Hey fellas, how's it going? Swag Hage here, and today I'm going to be following up on the promise I made in my last video to talk about the Second Great Ninja War. Now, like with the First War, a lot about this conflict is up to interpretation, though there is a bit less room to read between the lines here since we know a lot less about the time period that this war took place in. Fortunately, we are given a pretty rough idea of when the war took place, which is about 20 years after everybody signed the peace treaty that brought the First War to an end. Now, the thing is, it's a bit difficult to pinpoint where exactly that's supposed to be in Naruto's great timeline because we don't know how long the first war lasted. We know some things that help clear this up a little bit, but we're not given any concrete dates or anything, just major events and character deaths. The most notable thing that happened during this war was the fight between Hanzo and the Sanin, and if we assume that these three were about 20 years old when this fight took place, then that would place this war roughly 30 years before the beginning of the series. Some of the war's other major events include the death of Sasori's parents at the hands of Kakashi's father Sakumo, the death of Tsunade's spouse Don, and the respect deaths of all of the Rain Village orphans' parents. Now, as far as things that, like, we know 100% happened, at least according to manga canon, this is pretty much all of the important stuff. There's some filler that goes over some stuff that may have happened in this war, and it gets brought up in one of the movies, but like with all filler, it's non-canon, so I won't pay much attention to it. Now, there is quite a bit more about the second war to dig into, but like with the first, a lot of it is either inconclusive or not directly stated. For example, we're not even told which villages participated in this war. We know some, specifically the Leaf, Sand, and Rain villages, but everyone else is kind of up in the air. The Hidden Stone village was also probably involved, but I can't say for sure that they were. The closest thing we get to conclusive evidence that this was the case is a flashback where Nagato mentions being attacked by a renegade ninja who looks like he may be wearing a Hidden Stone headband, but again, he was a renegade ninja, so we don't know whether or not he was actually affiliated with the stone. Plus, this was a flashback, so Nagato may have been remembering it incorrectly. The ninja's allegiance is never actually stated, and the engraving on his headband isn't super clear. It definitely looks like the Stone Village symbol, so I think it's safe to say that they were involved, but this is the only sign we're given, at least as far as I can tell. Now, later in the same chapter, Nagato does mention a three-way conflict between the Leaf, Sand, and Stone Villages, and even though he doesn't do anything to indicate that he's changed topics here, there's no way he could be talking about the Second Great Ninja War, because over the course of this page and the next one, he explains that while the Akatsuki was working with Hanzo, bring this war to an end, the group was ambushed and Yahiko was killed. This could not have possibly happened during the second war because Obito met with Yahiko after being rescued by Madara when he was nearly killed during the third great ninja war. So again, we don't know for sure who all participated in this war, but we can say with certainty that the Leaf, Sand, and Rain villages did and that the Stone Village was a very likely fourth party. We also know that the Rain Village shouldn't have been the only small settlement that ended up getting involved in this war. It's said that much of the fighting took place in small villages villages located between the five great nations just in general, not specifically in the Hidden Rain village. That said, since it was literally in the middle of the only three nations that we know took part in this war, the Rain village definitely suffered the most collateral damage and was almost completely devastated. This was actually supposedly the only reason the Rain village participated at all. Now, the only person from the Rain village that we know for sure actually did anything was Hanzo, and I'm pretty sure that it's entirely because of this guy that the Rain village wasn't completely destroyed. Like, the fact that he was able to fight all three Sanin at the same time and the only reason they survived was because he let them live, he's obviously got to be pretty strong. Now, to be fair to the Sanin, they probably weren't at their strongest when this fight happened, but Jiraiya should have at least known Sage Mode since when he met Nagato, he was under the impression that the kid was the child of prophecy that the Toad Sage from Mount Miyaboku had told him about. Even if you assume that the Sanin were all substantially weaker than they were when we were first introduced to them in Part 1, it's still pretty pretty impressive that Hanzo managed to fight all three of them at the same time. Something else that's fun to consider is all of the other people Hanzo may have come into contact with throughout this war. We know he and Chio fought a handful of times, and it's because of this that she was able to develop an antidote to his toxins, but we don't really know who else he fought aside from her and the three Sani. It's totally possible that he had some run-ins with one or more of the Kage, since the villages don't really seem to have any qualms with putting their leaders on the front lines. While you could argue that maybe they stopped after how many Kage died during the First Great Ninja War, I don't think that's true since we learned that during the Third Great Ninja War, the Third Raikage challenged 10,000 ninja all by himself. So in the event that the Kage did participate in this war like they did in the last one and like they would in the next one, considering how much fighting took place in the Rain Village, I'd say it's really likely that Hanzo ran into at least one of these guys. Given what we know about the First War, at this point Hiruzen was definitely in charge of the Leaf, Onoki should have been in 
charge of the stone, and the person leading the sand village, well at this point that could have been any one of the first three Kazekage, we're not really sure. Now keep in mind, if Hanzo did fight Hiruzen or Onoki, during the second great ninja war they wouldn't have been old, nowhere near as old as they were when we were introduced to them. Hanzo would have been going up against them in their prime. And while you could argue that these fights probably didn't happen because we would have heard about them if they did, it's still really fun to imagine that they may have. I feel like there's a reason, after all, that Jiraiya was shocked that the leader of the Akatsuki, the guys who have Itachi on their team, was able to kill Hanzo, and while it could have totally just been a result of his personal encounter with Hanzo, I also think it would make a lot of sense if it was because this guy had survived the fight against Prime Hiruzen or something equally crazy. There's nothing in the series that confirms or even really hints at something like this happening, but like I've been saying, it is fun to think about, and it's totally possible given what we know about Kage and their tendency to follow their village's troops into battle. Now regardless of Hanzo's involvement and who he did or didn't fight, we don't really know how this war ended. Like I said multiple times, we don't even know who all participated in this war, much less how it affected those that did. But based on the way Nagato talks about it, to be more specific, when he's talking to Naruto, he refers to it as your Konoha Shinobi War, it seems like Konoha either initiated the war, won the war, or came out of the war pretty favorably compared to everybody else. What may have given Konoha their advantage is also, of course, never stated, but I think we can pretty safely assume that Tsunade and Hiruzen had something to do with it. Based on how horribly outmatched all of the other villages were by just Minato, like, by himself in the third Great Ninja War, I feel like it's safe to assume that Prime Hiruzen probably would have given everybody involved in this war a pretty hard time as well. Tsunade, on the other hand, practically revolutionized team building, and this probably probably gave Konoha a massive advantage. After Don was killed, she suggested that every three-man cell include a medical ninja, not to mention her own skills as a medical ninja probably made a pretty big difference on the battlefield as well. So in conclusion, it seems like, or it's at least reasonable to assume that the Leaf Village won the war or came as close to winning the war as anyone possibly could have, all things considered. We don't really know if or how the Cloud and Mist Villages were involved or how the Stone and Sand Villages were affected by this war, but but it did seem to lay a lot of the groundwork for the next major conflict, the Third Great Ninja War. Next time I see you guys, that's what we'll be taking a look at, and hopefully there's a bit more to it than this one, because the second war was a little bare bones compared to the first. Anyway, till then, take care, and as always, thanks for watching.